Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you very much for joining us. And if you're not new here, thank you very much for coming back to see me again. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about lipstick. I wanted to give you just a quick gallop through the history of lipstick, um, show you a few of the ones that I've got in my collection here, and then talk to you about a particular one that I wanted to review. So the first thing to tell you, of course, is that lipstick has been round, around for a very long time indeed. In fact, it was 3,500 years ago in Sumeria that a queen there was the first person that we know about who actually used artificial lip colour and she crushed up red rocks and mixed them with white lead and made a lip colour out of this mixture. It proved extremely popular with the courtiers and the elite of Sumeria at the time and we know that men and women were both using it and it was so precious that they took it to their graves and they had their lip colour um, in little cockle shells that they took and had entombed with them when they died. Um, they also influenced obviously the ancient Egyptians and of course you know the ancient Egyptians were highly into eye makeup but they were as well into lipstick not lipsticks but lip colour as well and they also crushed up rocks, red ochre, they mixed it with resin or gum and they made lip colour that way and they also perfumed it because all the things they did in the elite world of ancient Egypt was all about perfume. They had, I always remember learning about the great cones of perfume that they had on their heads for evening functions made of wax and perfume and as the wax melted the perfume flowed down their wigs. Anyway, Cleopatra, who, of whom I'm sure you are all aware, excuse my lash is giving me a bit of jip here, um, Cleopatra in about 50 BC was the first person that we know of to start using carmine which is a red colour and which is made of cochineal beetles um, smished up. Now we use cochineal, well I don't because I'm vegan, but um, co cochineal and carmine is used today in everything that you could possibly think of from makeup to sweets and we know it in our society as an additive called E120 so look out for that if you want to avoid eating beetles. Um, ancient Greece then moving right along as we skip through our historical story ancient Greece well it was the start of what became part of a lot of um, historical um, ways of looking at life and being and it was the prostitutes who were marked out as doing their job by wearing lip stains and colours and things like that and they used um, the same things as everyone else had been using through history but they also used all sorts of weird things to mix them up with like uh, sheep sweat and crocodile poo and mm, things like that which you know we don't really want to go into in any great detail so skipping over um, ancient Greece we move to their neighbours the Minoans who you may know through their frescoes of bull jumping and they used all the colours that everyone else did but they had discovered an amazing purple colour called Tyrian purple and this came from a shellfish which is called a murex and this gorgeous purple colour came from that and it was that purple that went on to become 
the purple that the Romans used, the elite Romans used to put stripes on their togas and in fact you weren't allowed to wear purple if you were not part of the elite in ancient Rome. Um, and talking about the elite in ancient Rome, you know Nero's wife Poppaea, it was said that she had servants or slaves whose job it was purely just to keep her lips coloured at all times of the day. So she would just have somebody there ready just to do her lips whenever she felt like it. Um, I'm just going to skip over the Dark Ages and the Early Middle Ages um, because there's not a lot there apart from the church coming down hard on people who wore lipstick so nothing changes in the world. And we move through to the 1500s with our beloved Elizabeth I who, as you know, wore a lot of white makeup made of white lead, but she also mixed her own lip colours and she used cochineal, um, the little carmine beetles, she used gum arabic to make it sticky and she also used egg white and something called fig milk which I'm not quite sure what fig milk is but um, if you know do give me some details in the comments. I'm also going to swi swiftly move over the Renaissance and the early pre-20th century centuries because otherwise this video is just going to be the longest thing ever in the history of videos and just say that in the 1960s, which is when I came into the world, the trend then was for very pale, almost white lips, and that was for all skin tones. Everybody was doing that. The Ronettes were very famous for um, their white lipsticks. Twiggy, all the big models, everybody had very pale, pale lips. Um, and then we move into the 70s, and the thing I remember from the 70s was when I started wearing makeup, not really, um, were strawberry flavoured roll-on lip glosses and these were so the thing to have back then sticky and sweet and just your hair stuck in them and they were ghastly things but we loved them um, and they smelled of just strawberry jam so good in parts um, also in the 70s with the onset of punk there was no such thing as black lipstick really then so we just used um, black coal pencils to do black lips and then moving into goth people started to work on um, making black lipsticks and then you could start to actually buy them in the shops so that made a big difference. Um, what we didn't have though until 2015 were liquid lipsticks that dried to matte so we had to use this stuff called lip coat which was basically like um, clear nail varnish with a brush in a little bottle and you painted it over your lipstick and you had to let it dry like this because once it was dry that was it it was like wearing lips uh, nail varnish on your lips and throughout the day if you weren't careful it would start to peel off in great big chunks taking the lipstick with it and obviously you couldn't top up your lipstick because it had an edge I mean it really was a hardcore stuff lip coat um, but as I say 2015-16 saw the launch of the first um, matte liquid lipsticks and from there it was all the sunny uplands of not having to worry about redoing your lipstick and getting it all over your teeth and getting it all over whoever you put your lips on. Um, basically, we are where we are now today. And I'm just going to show you a few of the lipsticks in my collection. So I've got some of these um, acrylic drawers that I got from Primark and in the top drawer I've got um, glosses. Now I don't usually wear glosses as you may know. Um, I just use them for photographs, things like that. 
Um, I've got some particularly nice ones that people have given me. I've got a, a beautiful um, Mac one here that was a gift. And I've also got a um, Laura Mercier one that was a gift as well. But um, I don't get to wear it very often um, because of the colour. It is lovely though and it smells gorgeous. Um, I've got a couple of NYX's metallic cosmic metals. I've got a NYX um, lip lingerie clear gloss which is quite useful for using over a matte liquid lipstick just for photographs. Um, and those are the ones, I've got a gold revolution one which occasionally I use for different um, looks. So those are my glosses. And then this drawer here is all my red lipsticks. And um, I've got a, a couple of Kat Von D's, or rather, sorry, KVD Vegan Beauty. Um, I've got a small one, which is a bright red one. And I've got my favourite one, which is Nosferatu, which is a nice dark red one. Uh, I've got a couple of Revolution ones and a Chanel. But I do really want to find some more of this, which is by Sleek. It's called Mat Me Up and the colour is Old Hollywood. But I've got a horrible feeling that they've discontinued it. What can you do? The next drawer down is blue and green. And there's more in here than there are in the red drawer, I can tell you. Um, I've got the collection Slay All Night, which is a blue glitter, which is good for wearing over dark colours. I've got the KVD Vegan Beauty Everlasting Lip Veil, which is again a blue glitter, but they've discontinued these. Um, I've got a couple of Lottie London lip foils, actually, um, because they do dry down very well. And this one, it looks blue, but that's because I use it over a blue lipstick all the time. And that's either the Lottie London Slay All Day, which is a blue colour, or the one I've recently discovered, um, and this is the brand that I'm going to be reviewing at the end, and this is Jolie or Jolie Beauty. Um, the CEO is called Jolie, so I imagine it's called Jolie Beauty. And this colour is called Midnight. It's a beautiful dark blue. And this is a lipstick called the Air Matte Liquid Lipstick. And these, they really are air light. When you put them on, you can barely feel that you're wearing them. They dry down completely matte. And this blue is everything I wanted in a dark blue. So there's that. A couple of other bits and bobs. I've got a nice um, green nip and fab, which I don't often wear green lipstick, but when I do, that's the one I use. And I sometimes wear it with my KVD bullet lipstick which is a green colour, which I can't read, of course. Plan 9. <laughs> of course it is. Plan 9, named after a movie called Plan 9 from Outer Space, I think you'll find. Um, so that's blues and greens. My favourite drawer. Purples. Got another couple of everlasting lip veils, <coughs> KVD, because, well, they're the most beautiful, beautiful glitters. I've got three, four, four Nixes, because they do some gorgeous purples. Havana is the best purple that they do. 
KBD Vegan Beauty sort of a movie colour, which I wear occasionally, but it really is much, it comes out much lighter than it looks here. So, not my favourite one, but this one is. This is by LA Splash. This is called Creature, as in Creature from the Black Lagoon. And it's part of their classic horror range, which they did um, quite some time ago. And I love this lipstick. Absolutely love it. I've also got, which is what I'm wearing at the moment, another Jolie Beauty one. This one is called Enchanted. And this is this dark purple. And this is, I love this purple. Um, I got this when it was on sale. I think they're $12.99 now, but definitely worth it um, as I say they go on very light um, no transference at all you can drink hot drinks with them they oh, can't tell you enough nice things about them and last but one is my draw of black and dark colors so as far as blacks go, I've got um, the VE Cosmetics, which is very good but thin and does tend to peel a bit. I've got the KVD Vegan Beauty in Witches, which is very, very good black lipstick. Highly recommend. And I've got my He Who Shall Not Be Named lipstick in Weirdo because the formula of this is second to none. Best liquid lipstick formula ever, I'm afraid. So I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna repurchase um, because the KVD one is very, very, very good. And I may have to treat myself to another Jolie Beauty because they do do a black one as well called Demise, I think, off the top of my head. So I might try that one and see how that goes. I've also got another one of those um, Stay the Night, or yes, yeah, Stay the Night ones by Collection. And this is a grey, a grey colour with um, glitter in it. So that's pretty unusual. That's nice for wearing with um, a black eye and grey eye. And the other things, I weirdly, I've got this um, one from New Look that I got ages ago, which is like a dark, it's almost a burgundy, but not quite. I always get a lot of compliments on that one. Um, and then the rest are all, um, P.S. from Primark or MUA. So those are all the liquid ones I've got. The last... Jeffrey doesn't want to go back in. The last one is bullet lipsticks. And so consequently, these are probably quite old. Um... Ilamasqua, beautiful lipsticks. One in the shade ESP and one in the shade Control. Um, very, very lovely. I will do some swatches and insert pictures so that you can see, but they are lovely. And I was also given a couple of Urban Decay lipsticks as well by somebody. Um, if you're watching Colette, thank you very much. Um, these are in the shades Mirana and Marfa, Marfa, something like that. Um, this is metallicized and this is a matte. Um, and those are, there's a silver, silver lipstick for occasions when you need a silver lipstick. And that's about the height of it, really. Um, the only other thing I was going to show you was um, this, which is still in its packaging. I haven't opened it. It's a, because it's Maybelline, and I, I try as hard as I can not to buy or use 
um, things that aren't cruelty free and or vegan. But I used to use this all the time, Superstay 24 hour lip colour. You put the liquid lipstick on and then you put the other end, the clear, over the top. And that, that never did budge. But um, I'm not going to use this, I'm just going to keep it. Um, don't ask me why. <laughs> I might give it to somebody who doesn't um, have such strong feelings as I do about cruelty free and vegan lipsticks. So we'll see. Um, so basically that is where we are with my lipstick collection. The Jolie, Jolie Beauty, the Purple Enchanted and the Blue Midnight, I'm going to highly recommend actually because the colours are so beautiful. Um, I wore this blue one the other day with a bit of um, the collection Stay All Night, Stay the Night um, glittery over the top. Um, and that lasted very well, very well indeed. This purple one that I'm wearing now, um, this will last quite well. I mean, you can't like bite into a burger or an apple or something like that wearing it. Um, but if you eat judiciously and don't um, smear your lips with greasy things, then these will last you very, very well indeed. And they will come off with either a micellar water or an oil-based eye makeup remover. So very nice, very nice quality, 12 99 So they're not as expensive as KVD and you know who, uh, but they're not cheap like the MUA ones which are good if you just want to wear them for about an hour. Uh, nice colours but don't really last that long. So I'm going to say it's a big thumbs up from me for Jolie Beauty. Right, that is the end of the video. I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. I'm going to say I hope you're all staying well and safe and looking after each other. If you are having to go back to work soon, never mind. Some of us have been working the whole time. Um, and please, please remember to stay strange, everybody. I know we're living in difficult times, but it's not going to stop you being yourself. So I look forward to seeing you the next time you come and visit me. Bye for now everybody.